Hey, everyone. I'm Mia, and before I dive into what happened with my nightmare of a sister-in-law, please like and subscribe. Trust me, you'll want to hear how this drama unfolded. So, I'm 28 and crushing it in marketing at Davis & Partners in Chicago. Life was actually pretty sweet. I was up for a major promotion, had just gotten engaged to Oscar, my amazing boyfriend of three years, and my family was always tight-knit. Well, at least until Amanda came into the picture. I can't wait to see you both this weekend, my mom said during our weekly call. Your father and I are thrilled about your engagement. Thanks, Mom. Oscar and I are excited to celebrate with everyone. My brother Daniel had married Amanda two years ago. At first, she seemed nice enough, but there was always something off. Like how she'd make these little comments at family dinners. Oh, Mia, brave of you to wear that dress. Not everyone can pull off such a bold choice. I'd bite my tongue, not wanting to upset Daniel. He was my best friend growing up, and we'd always had each other's backs. Your sister's engagement party will be beautiful, my mom told Amanda at Sunday dinner. June 15th is perfect for an outdoor celebration. June is wonderful, Amanda rubbed her pregnant belly. We're so blessed to be expecting our little miracle that month, too. I noticed how she emphasized miracle while looking directly at me. Classic Amanda, always trying to one-up everyone. Have you guys picked a date for the baby shower yet? I asked, trying to be supportive. Actually, we're thinking June 15th would be perfect. I nearly choked on my water. That's... That's my engagement party date. We announced it two months ago. Did you? Must have slipped my mind. But you understand, right? With my condition, we need to work around my doctor's schedule. Daniel jumped in. Maybe we can figure something out. Both events are important. Of course they are, honey. Amanda's voice dripped with sweetness. But Mia isn't pregnant. She can be flexible. I've already booked the venue and sent out invitations. I said firmly. Well, that's inconsiderate. Family should come first, Mia. A new life is entering this world. My dad cleared his throat uncomfortably while mom suddenly became very interested in her plate. Hey, let's grab coffee tomorrow, Daniel suggested. We can sort this out. Later that night, Oscar called. How was dinner? Amanda's at it again. She's trying to schedule her baby shower on our engagement party date. That's not a coincidence. You know that, right? Yeah. I just wish Daniel could see what she's really like. Little did I know this was just the beginning of Amanda's games. The engagement date drama? The coffee shop meeting with Daniel turned into a complete disaster. I sat there watching my brother transform into someone I barely recognized. Mia, you're being completely unreasonable. Amanda's already sent out invitations for the baby shower. What? When did she even have time to do that? I announced my date months ago. Well... Maybe if you attended more family dinners instead of being so wrapped up in your career and Oscar. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That's when my phone buzzed. A text from my cousin Rachel. Hey, is everything okay? Amanda told everyone you've been making nasty comments about her pregnancy and trying to steal her spotlight. My hands started shaking. Daniel, did Amanda tell you I've been saying things about her pregnancy? Look, she's just hurt that you're not more supportive. She says you roll your eyes whenever she talks about the baby. That's completely false. When have I ever... There you go, getting defensive again. You know she's sensitive right now. Just then, Linda from work walked by our table. She gave me the coldest look before hurrying past. Linda, wait, I called out. She reluctantly turned around. I don't want to get involved, Mia, but telling potential clients that I'm incompetent, that's low. What? I never... Amanda warned me about how you treat people who get in your way. After Linda left, I turned to Daniel. Did you hear that? Amanda's been spreading lies about me at work. Maybe if you spent less time attacking her. That night, I got a call from Oscar. Babe, why is your brother asking me about Jennifer from accounting? Jennifer, what about her? He said Amanda told him we were having lunch dates behind your back. I felt sick. Jennifer was our company's new accountant. I'd asked Oscar to help her review some contracts since he works in finance. The next family dinner was unbearable. Amanda burst into tears when I arrived. I just... I just wanted us all to celebrate our baby together, she sobbed. But Mia's making everything so difficult. Mom patted her hand. 
Now, now, girls, we need to work this out. Work what out? I snapped. She deliberately scheduled her shower on my engagement date and has been spreading lies about me. Mia, please, Dad interrupted. Think about Amanda's condition. Her condition? What about the fact that she told Oscar's parents I'm only marrying him for his money? Amanda's eyes went wide with fake innocence. I would never. Daniel, she's attacking me again. I think you should leave, Mia. You're upsetting my wife. I stood up, shaking. Fine, but first... Amanda, want to explain these texts? The ones where you're telling your friends how you deliberately picked my engagement date? Amanda's face changed for a split second before the waterworks started again. Those... those are fake. Daniel, she's trying to turn you against me. I looked around the table at my brother's angry face, my mom's tears, my dad's disappointment. Years of friendship and trust, destroyed by Amanda's lies. I'm done, I said quietly. But the truth has a way of coming out. And when it does, don't say I didn't warn you. I kept my engagement date. Despite Amanda's theatrics, I refused to let her win. But that only made her more desperate. Did you hear what Mia did? I overheard Amanda on the phone while passing by her office at the family business. She tried to push me down the stairs. I'm afraid for my baby's safety. I froze, recording her conversation. That's when I noticed something odd on her computer screen company financial records she shouldn't have access to. Later that week, a woman named Rebecca messaged me on LinkedIn. I worked with Amanda at Peterson & Company. Your brother Daniel reached out about her character. I think you both need to know something. We met at a quiet cafe. Rebecca looked nervous. Amanda wasn't just fired, she was almost charged with fraud. She manipulated accounts, stole client information. But the company wanted to avoid scandal. Why are you telling me this now? Because she did the same thing to my sister. Befriended her, turned everyone against her, then stole from her business. It's a pattern. I started digging. More people came forward. Former friends, colleagues, even Amanda's ex-roommate. I hired a forensic accountant to look into the family business records. The results were shocking. Your sister-in-law has been siphoning money through fake vendor accounts, he explained. Almost $200,000 so far. I was gathering evidence when my phone pinged. An email from my boss. Mia, regarding the complaints about inappropriate client communication, we need to discuss your position. Then Daniel called. Mia, I found something weird in our accounts. What kind of weird? Missing money. And Amanda's been receiving strange calls. She says they're wrong numbers, but... Daniel, we need to talk, not at the house, somewhere private. We met at our childhood treehouse. I brought everything. Rebecca's statement. The financial records. Recordings of Amanda's lies. She's done this before, Daniel. Multiple times. He stared at the evidence, hands shaking. The baby shower. She admitted she picked your date on purpose, said it was a joke that got out of hand. I defended her. There's more. Check your joint accounts. His face went pale as he looked at his phone. They're... empty. She said she was investing in her friend's business. That friend doesn't exist. I checked. Oh, God. Last week she said you tried to push her down the stairs. I... I almost believed her. I would never. I know that now. Mia, I'm so sorry. I've been such an idiot. It's not over. She still has access to the business accounts. Not anymore. I called dad on my way here. We're changing all passwords, freezing accounts. Daniel looked broken. How did I not see this? Because she's good at what she does, but not good enough. The next day would change everything. Amanda had no idea what was coming. My engagement party was perfect. The garden venue looked stunning, and Amanda was nowhere in sight. Daniel had finally taken a stand. She's not coming, he announced that morning. I found her burner phone. She's been in contact with someone named Marcus. Her gambling bookie, I finished. The forensic accountant traced the missing company money to offshore betting accounts. The company's pressing charges. Dad said grimly. She stole over $300,000 in total. The police are involved now. Daniel was devastated. She's been betting on everything. Sports, cards, even stock market day trading. Our savings, the baby's college fund, it's all gone. 
I want a divorce, Daniel told her when she finally came home, and a paternity test. You can't do this to me. I'm pregnant with your child. Are you? Because Marcus says different. She went ballistic, destroying family photos and screaming accusations. I found Amanda alone in her office, frantically shredding documents. Why, Amanda? Was destroying my life some kind of sick game to you? Game? You have no idea what it's like being the outsider. Perfect Mia with her perfect career. Perfect fiancé. Perfect relationship with Daniel. So this was about jealousy. I had nothing when I met Daniel. My family was broke. My reputation ruined in Nevada. Then I saw your family's business, your success. I deserved that life more than you. By stealing, by lying, I had to survive. Every time you achieved something, it reminded me of my failures. The engagement party, I couldn't stand another celebration of perfect Mia. So yes, I tried to ruin it. I tried to ruin everything. And the baby? Was that just another lie? Her laugh was hollow. Marcus understood me. He didn't judge my gambling like Daniel did. At least the baby's real, even if it's not Daniel's. You need help, Amanda. Help? I need what you have. The respect, the success, the family love. I worked so hard manipulating everything, and you still came out on top. It's not fair. No, what's not fair is betraying people who welcomed you into their family. You could have had it all honestly, Amanda. Instead, you chose to be a fraud. The police entered just as she lunged at me screaming about how I'd ruined her perfect plan. You did this to me, she screamed when they escorted her from the building. You've ruined my life. My promotion came through after HR discovered Amanda had fabricated the complaints against me. During the investigation, they found she'd created fake emails using company servers, another criminal charge. My wedding day was everything I dreamed of. Daniel stood beside me as my honorary man of honor. Amanda's life crumbled spectacularly. The baby wasn't Daniel's. It was Marcus's, her bookie. She lost her job, her marriage, and her freedom. The court ordered her to repay everything she'd stolen. Last I heard, she'd moved back to Nevada, working minimum wage jobs because no company would hire her with multiple fraud convictions. Three years later, my marketing firm is thriving. Daniel has rebuilt his life and is dating someone genuine and kind. My parents have become experts at spotting manipulators. Oscar and I are expecting our first child. Sometimes I think about how Amanda almost destroyed our family with her lies. But here's the thing about truth. It always finds its way to the surface. They say success is the best revenge. I say peace is... The peace of knowing toxic people can't hurt you anymore once you see them for who they really are. And as for Amanda... Well, karma has a way of catching up with people like her one lie at a time. Now the story is over and I have some questions for you. Would you have confronted Amanda immediately after discovering her lies, or was I right to quietly gather evidence first? And the bigger question, can jealousy ever justify destroying someone's life, or does a troubled past excuse toxic behavior? Share your experiences in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories, and remember... Sometimes the best revenge isn't confrontation, it's living your best life while they face the consequences of their actions.